Hey, you guys, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about what to plant first in your garden. And as I was starting to think about how to talk to you about this, especially if you're a new gardener, my mind went back to something that I saw when I was watching the NFL playoff games earlier this month. Now, even if you're not a football fan, I think you're going to appreciate the analogy and hopefully it'll help all of this make a little bit more sense. So I was watching the Dallas Cowboys because that's always been my husband's team. We'll have a moment of silence at the moment for that. But what I noticed was when they were getting ready to play the game at Cowboy Stadium, I heard them say that it was 15 degrees outside the stadium in Dallas. And they showed an image, a video of whenever they opened the doors, everyone came rushing in because it's a stadium with a roof and I'm assuming it was climate controlled. Everybody was rushing in at once. And I started thinking about our gardens and how sometimes I think that as beginners, we view the garden season that way. We view it as once we get past that average last frost date, then we plant everything all at once. But it's not actually meant to be that way, especially if you want to grow more and grow a more variety of things in your garden. As I was thinking about that playoff game, my mind also went back to a women's event that we hosted at our church back in September, I think, and I saw a contrast at what we saw at the Cowboy Stadium and what we saw at that women's event. Now, let me tell you what the difference was. We had a period of time of about an hour and a half or so where women could arrive at their convenience and they could register for that hour, hour and a half before the event began. I was in charge of helping people get to their places, get to the registration tables and all of that. So I was able to see the flow of people and when they arrived. When the doors opened, there were a few people that were at the door waiting to come in, but not all like 1700 of them all trying to get in the same door. Instead, there was a flow to it. Now, what we did find is that there were certain times that a lot of people were arriving all at once. And so, yes, there were some busy times. But overall, from the time we opened the doors to the time the event started, and even a few minutes after the event started, people were coming in at different times. And I think for me, that's a better picture to share with you of what our garden plans need to look like. It's less of go time, let's go plant everything. And it's more like, here's the window and we're gonna plant some things early. We're going to be busier and we're gonna be planting some things kind of all at once because it is about the right time to plant all of these things. And then there's some things that are gonna be trickling in later. The things that, whether we're looking at a summer, crop of you know sweet potatoes or okra which is some of the latest ones that we plant in the summer or we're we're looking even further down to our far, fall garden and our winter garden with the last things that we're planting so with that in mind picturing that your garden plans if you're trying to make use of all the seasons they're not going to look like one big rush let's talk about those early crops that we need to plant the very first ones the ones that are metaphorically sitting there at the door waiting for you to open the door at the right time. It's not all of your crops, but it is some. And if you can get a jump on some of these crops, you're gonna have better success with them. So today we're gonna be talking about what those crops are and why it's important not to wait and plant them too late. And that'll hopefully give you an idea of what seeds you need to have ready and what plants you're going to have ready to be able to plant first in your garden. Going back to the Cowboy Stadium analogy, you absolutely can plant your garden this way. In fact, most beginners, I would say, probably do. I know I did as a first-time gardener before I really knew what I was doing. We just went to Lowe's. We got all the transplants we planted on one day, and we called it a garden. And that it was a garden. I don't mean that tongue in cheek. It it actually was a garden and and it was enough to get me hooked on gardening altogether. So please don't hear me say that planting everything at once is the wrong thing to do. It just lacks potential and you're limited at what you can plant when you do it that way. The thing is, is that if you wait until after your last frost, you absolutely can plant all of your warm season crops like tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, squash, those kind of plants and be perfectly fine. 
But what I didn't realize and what so many beginners, I feel like, learned the hard way is that in many climates, you won't find success with some of your cool season crops like lettuce, broccoli, and greens because that's too late to plant those crops in many climates. Now, if you have a very mild summer and you don't get super hot, you will probably be able to get away with it. I know a lot of my friends in the North, they're able to plant cool season crops all summer long. But for those of us in the South or those of us who receive hot weather in the middle of the summer, that's waiting too late. But not only that, but by just doing that Cowboy Stadium garden, I maybe have to refer to that that way, forgive me, then you're not taking advantage of a third of the potential of your garden. You're basically taking one third of your garden and putting it all in the summer garden and you have the opportunity for spring and fall and you can get so much more out of your garden when you look at your garden in the context of a three season garden. Now, if you're a new gardener or you're a gardener who has only planted in the summer, This is great news. You'll be amazed at all that you can plant and grow when you take advantage of all three of these seasons, spring, summer, and fall, all in one garden space. You can do this without having to expand your space. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself. Today, we're taking the first step though, and we're talking about what you can expect to plant first in your garden. As we talk about what you can plan to plant first in your garden, I want you to keep in mind that this is only the beginning steps of what I hope that you'll embrace as your three season garden. But to do that, to really understand how to plant and grow a three season garden, there are some concepts you need to know. And these concepts extend beyond what we're gonna be talking about today. In fact, I'll be going over many of these concepts that are important for a three season garden in a free masterclass. If you're watching this in real time, it's coming up the first week of February and it's called the Productive Garden Masterclass. This is such a popular class. We're doing five of them over a three day period. So you can choose what time works best for you. You'll learn about some of the biggest mistakes new gardeners make, such as planting at the wrong time. So today, while I'm talking to you about what to plant first, when you plant will depend on your climate. So even though you and I might plant this crop first, when I plant it may be different from when you plant it. We'll also talk about climate factors beyond your garden zone and average last and first frost dates. Now, trust me, garden zones and frost dates are important, but they're only a limited piece of your climate puzzle. We'll talk about some of the climate factors that few people talk about that actually will make a huge difference in your success when you know about them. We'll also talk about strategies to help get you planting and harvesting more without spending more time in the garden. We'll talk about succession planting methods that will have you harvesting longer and more without expanding your space. This is really important to understand as we're talking about this three season garden. And finally, we'll be talking about what you need to know to successfully grow in all three seasons. Not only that, but just for registering for the masterclass, you will be entered to win a drawing that is a huge bundle of garden products from some of my partners, such as a green stock planter, a birdies raised bed, bottles of organic rev products and many other garden supplies just for registering so whether you can come live or whether you watch the replay that we'll have available for a few days after that you'll be registered to win that big prize pack but if you do come live we'll have lots of giveaways from many of these same partners like epic gardening wood prairie family farm organic rev if you're coming live to the master class so i wanted to make sure that you knew about that because everything we're talking about today in the podcast assumes that you're going to be planning for this three season garden and we'll give you some of the tools for to help you know how to do that in the master class to register you can go to journeywithjill.net slash masterclass we'll have that in the description in the show notes below so that you can have a direct link but it's journeywithjill.net slash masterclass feel free to pause this and open your internet browser and go ahead and register while we're thinking about it and when you come back we will talk about what to plant first The main thing to understand when it comes to what to plant first is you're going to be planting cool weather crops. These crops, especially if you're a beginner, you may not realize that these crops can take a frost. 
Most of them can take a freeze and many of them even down into the 20s if they're acclimated to the cold. So these crops can actually do really well in your garden even when it's cold, more so than you would ever have thought. So understand that as we're talking about what to plant first, you're choosing the most cold hardy of crops. There are three types of plants that you'll want to plant first that fall under this cool season crop umbrella. First, we've got seeds that you may sow indoors. Second, we've got seeds that you will direct sow in the garden. And third, we've got outdoor transplants. First, let's talk about indoor seeds. When we start these cool season crops indoors, even though they can take the cold weather in general, we're gonna be starting these indoors because they are gonna be growing in a controlled environment. And these particular ones will take longer to grow and they need more time. So that's why we're starting them first. We've also got outdoor seeds, and these are the crops that can germinate in cooler soil. Soil temperature is really important when it comes to seeds and germination. Some seeds won't germinate if the soil is too cold. Some seeds won't germinate if the soil is too hot. You've got this little Goldilocks area, and different seeds are different. Cool season crops can generally germinate in cooler soil. Warm season crops can generally germinate in warm soil, and you can kind of see why that's the case. It just the way that they're created. But all that to say, the outdoor seeds that we're gonna sow first are gonna be the ones that can germinate best in cooler soil. And then finally, we have outdoor transplants. These are sometimes gonna be the ones, and maybe most likely gonna be, be the ones that you either started from seed indoors or you purchased them from the garden center. But the outdoor transplants that you're gonna plant first, they are gonna be your cool season crops that can take a frost and can even take a light freeze. Knowing these things, here are the ones that I recommend that you plant first indoors. We're gonna talk about which ones to plant first indoors and which ones to plant first outdoors. The very first seeds I plant indoors for any garden year, they're going to be onions. Now I say that with a caveat because if you have watched my YouTube videos, then you know that onions have been a little bit of a challenge for me to grow from seed over the years. I feel like I learned a lot last year and I'm tweaking some things. I do feel like it's a little bit more difficult for me because I'm in the South and I'm kind of in that short day slash intermediate day, but I can get away with some long day onions. And anyway, there's some challenges here that I don't see gardeners in the North having as much, but all that to say, onions are not the easiest seeds to start from seed indoors. So if you're a brand new gardener, I would wait until later. I've been doing this for 10 years and I'm still trying to dial it in. Now, hopefully your learning curve won't be as, as bad as mine. But if you are planning on planting onions from seed, they're going to be the first ones that, that you plant. They are going to take a longer time to grow until they're ready to get out in the garden. The mistake that I've made in the past is not starting them early enough. And then when I felt like it was time to plant them out into the garden, they were so small that they ended up dying in the garden for one reason or another, whether it was a cold snap or not enough water or just not big enough to be able to, to grow and to establish. Really, when you're planting onions out in the garden, you want them to be about the width of a pencil. To get them to that width then they're gonna have to grow indoors for longer than most of your other crops. Ideally, I like to plant between 12 and 16 weeks before my average last frost date. And that may vary based on where you're located, but for me, I've found that going on more of the 16 week has been a little bit more successful for me. So this year, I started my onions at the beginning of December. Now, uh, some people have asked me, is it too late to start onions? And, and you're talking to me here in January. It really depends on where you're located. And I am going to be starting some onions at the later part of January. Last year I did it and they were not ready to go out when I planted my other onions, but I planted them a little bit later and they did okay. They didn't give me the huge bulbs, but they got me a later harvest, which was actually kind of nice because they ended up storing longer. That's, that's a subject for a whole other podcast or YouTube video and, and one that's definitely coming up. But all that to say, onions are going to be the first crops, the first seeds that you start indoors. The next one, and this is just for me and how I do my garden. You may have others that I'm not even going to mention, but these are the ones that I'm planting in my garden. And they're also the ones that are pretty common from what I hear other gardeners plant. And that is your broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and kale. Now, full disclosure, 
I don't plant cauliflower. We don't grow it and I don't plant kale anymore. But if you want to grow kale and you want to start them indoors, they're actually pretty easy to direct sow also. But if you want to get a head start and start them indoors, they're going to, they're going to fall into this category. For me, it's going to be the broccoli and the cabbage. Those are the ones that I'm planting earlier, not as early as onions, but definitely earlier than the other crops. And for those, I'm planning on planting those indoors about six weeks before I want to plant them out into the garden or 10 to 12 weeks before my average last frost date. For me in the South, this timing is critical, especially with broccoli, because once it starts getting warmer, the broccoli is going to want to start to flower. And it happens so fast. It happens in, gosh, I think every Southern gardener has experienced this before. And for me, getting the broccoli planted early is critical. Cabbage, still, it's important to get it planted early. Uh, probably not as critical as broccoli, though. But like I said, that's going to be the second round that I plant. But I also plant celery at the same time just because celery grows slow. It seeds take a long time to germinate, longer than the other crops, and then they, it just grows at a snail's pace. So for me, even though I'm not going to plant celery out in the garden at the same time that I plant broccoli and cabbage because celery is a little bit more frost and freeze tender than broccoli and cabbage, I'm still starting it from seed at the same time to give me more time to grow it indoors. For me, that's about eight weeks before I want to plant it out in the garden or 10 to 12 weeks before my average last frost date. Celery is one of those that it takes a little bit of time to dial in with the plant timing. So what you decide works best for you in your climate may be something that you play around with. That's just what ended up work, working best for me in Arkansas, knowing that we get hot pretty fast. The next thing that I start planting is lettuce. Now, lettuce is interesting because it's a quicker days to maturity than broccoli, cabbage, uh, cauliflower, celery. So it actually, we're not in as much of a hurry because it doesn't take as long to grow as those other ones. But I like to start it early because I like to have successions of lettuce that I start early and I have a really har early harvest of spring lettuce. And then hopefully that it'll go through in, in my garden, my lettuce lasts till about mid-May until it starts to bolt. But for the first planting of lettuce, I usually sow it about four to six weeks before I plan to plant it out in my garden or 10 to 12 weeks before my average last frost date. And this is assuming that I can cover it if necessary because we're, we always get some late freezes. Lettuce can do okay in like upper 20s. I've had experience with that unless you just plant them the day before. Obviously, you want to plant them and let them establish, and then it's more resilient. Um, and some some varieties of, of lettuce are more resilient than others. For the first crop, I'm planting something like tango and winter density because those, in my experience, have been more cold-hardy. So I'm planting those cold-hardy lettuces first. And then later on, as I succession plant, I'm switching more to the heat-tolerant lettuces like muir, which has been one of my favorite ones. It's M-U-I-R. But... All that to say, you don't have to plant lettuce this early like I do. Like I'm going to be planting my lettuce at the same time that I'm planting my broccoli and my cabbage and my celery, but I wouldn't have to. You can wait a little bit later. And if you deal with snow cover, you may not want to plant your lettuce that soon just because lettuce can go out into the garden quicker than they, they, they grow pretty fast indoors. So you don't have to plant it this early, but still lettuce is one of the first things that I plant. So those are the, the seeds that I'm going to be planting indoors first in my garden and some of the ones that you might want to keep on your radar so that you can get them planted first and not wait too late. Next, let's talk about what to plant outdoors, whether you're going to be direct sowing or you're going to be planting from transplant. The first seeds that I plant outdoors in my garden, they are going to be spinach. Now, Personally, I really rely on the spinach that I plant in the fall that starts to germinate and it lasts through the winter and then it really starts to pick up this time of year, usually late January, early February. But I do plant a spring planting of spinach. The key with spinach is in my garden, it's the most cold hardy crop that I grow, but it's also the most heat sensitive. Spinach in my garden starts to bolt right around my average last frost date. And I've I've clocked that every year on my garden journal, and it's right about the same time as my average last frost date has passed. That's when the spinach starts to bolt. 
So that's really early. If you're waiting until, you know, that go time of your average last frost date and you want to grow spinach, you've waited too late. Unless you're in a really mild winter or mild summer climate. For the rest of us, it's going to be too late. And so spinach in particular is one of the first seeds that I plant. I talked about soil temperature before and how different seeds need different types of soil temperature in order to germinate. Spinach can germinate when the temperature is as low as 40. Now, if you're planting and the soil temperature is 40, it's going to take longer to germinate. It could take, you know, two, three, four weeks to germinate, but it can also sprout when the soil temperature is up to 75. Now, up to 75, it's going to sprout quicker, but the higher you get closer to that 75 or even above that, the less germination rate you're going to have just because it doesn't like the heat. Okay. So I think a good medium in my experience is, you know, 50 degrees or so. And keep in mind too, I like to plant my spinach in my green stock vertical planter or grow bags because that soil is going to warm up quicker. So while your ground soil may still be in the 30s or 40s, the container soil is going to be a lot warmer, especially if it's getting some sun. So that would be an ideal place to plant spinach. But spinach is the first one that I plant. The other ones that I start planting directly from seed in my garden are greens mixes that I plan on harvesting for salad greens. And I'm specifically saying greens mixes like brassica greens. If you are looking at any kind of like mescaline greens mix, that's going to be more of your lettuces, which are going to be a little bit more picky and needing a little higher of a soil temperature. But your gra- your brassica greens like arugula, kale, mizuna, mustard, pak choy, those are some of the mixes that I've bought in the past they will germinate when the temperatures are pretty low, like 45, even up to 75. Honestly, arugula in particular, even some of these other ones, they'll germinate all summer long. They're actually not that particular. That's why I love planting and growing them because they're not near as picky with soil temperature, whether you're, you're talking about cold soil or you're talking about warm soil. And the thing is that I found with these brassica greens is that they tend to bolt later than spinach does. Like, Now, they don't take as long to mature. A lot of times you can start harvesting them in about 30 days. But as far as being sensitive to heat, I found that they're not quite as sensitive to heat as spinach is. And for me, when I'm planning on sowing these directly in the garden, and again, this is usually in my green stock. I love having a whole green stock dedicated to salad greens. I'm still succession planting them. I'm not planting them all at once. I think what I have planned this year is I'm going to be doing three successions in my green stock of both lettuce and these greens. But I start the first round about 10 to 12 weeks before my average last frost date. So probably the end of, I think the end of January is going to be my first sowing of some of these brassica greens. And then every two weeks after that, I'll be sowing more. So that's what I'm starting really early on in the season. As far as transplants, we're going to be looking at like your your broccoli, your celery, your cabbage, um, all of those that we started indoors, they're going to be going out. And I usually do this about a month before my average last frost date. But at that point of the season, you really have to watch your weather just because you never know what you're going to get about that time. So that will also kind of depend on where you're located, what your weather's like. Um, maybe you live in the kind of climate where you have snow cover until all of a sudden you get a thaw and then you may have to wait until that happens. Um, so a lot of that is, is you want to hold a little bit loosely, but those are going to be the first transplants that you transplant out. They're going to be the ones that you sowed from seed indoors, or if you purchase transplants, they're going to be your broccoli and your cabbage, your cauliflower. Those are the first ones that you're going to plant in the garden. Or if you decide that you want to buy some spinach transplants at the garden center, they're a little bit more t- tricky to transplant, but those will definitely be some of your first to do that. Keep in mind with all of these crops that I've mentioned, number one, it's not an exhaustive list. Granted, I am in the southern U.S., and just like many of you who are in the north never grew up eating okra, which is a staple here, there are a lot of cool season crops that I know a lot of northern gardeners grow that I've honestly never eaten, so I've never really thought to grow, and it's a little bit more challenging here to grow cool season crops just because where we're at, we go from cold to hot pretty quick in the spring, so having a long growing season for cool season crops is a little bit more challenging. So number one, this isn't an exhaustive list, but if you're growing something that you know is a cool season crop, um, 
like kohlrabi or, or parsnips or some of these other crops that I've never grown before, then keep in mind that these are cool season crops and they will go in the ground sooner than your quintessential summer garden crops. Also keep in mind that what we've talked about today is a guide. This is just an overview of here's what you will probably want to plant first and always consider how is your season going when you actually plant. If you see your calendar says that you should plant this, but you're just kind of iffy because your winter has hung on a little bit longer, then then wait. If you can, certain crops, it's kind of hard to wait on for me, especially like broccoli, but most of the time you want to really watch your weather about the time to plant and then make the best decision that you can. Another thing that I like to do is especially when I'm transplanting, I like to transplant during a mild spell, which is what we typically get. A lot of times in early March, we'll go for a week in the fifties and barely, you know, barely get below freezing. If at all, that's when I'm going to plant some of these just to get them acclimated. And then if we have a cold snap at the end of March, which we often do, and sometimes into April, the plants have already acclimated enough where they're going to be okay. So just always kind of keep that in mind. And then Check your soil temperature before planting your seeds. If you're not quite sure if your soil temperature is high enough for germination, a soil thermometer is a, a very easy, cheap investment to make just to make sure that you're not planting seeds in cold, wet soil where instead of germinating, sometimes they'll just sit there and rot. Now, this is just your first step for your three season garden plan. And I'll get into much more detail and also the why behind all of this as we talk about the other two seasons, summer and fall, in the free masterclass. Again, we'll have classes from February 6th through 8th. You can choose which time works best for you and it's free. So I hope if you're listening to this podcast or watching me on YouTube here, that if you're watching in real time or listening in real time, that you'll grab your seat. And we do have limited number of seats per class. So I would recommend you go ahead and sign up and get the time that works best for you at your earliest convenience. So that's journeywithjill.net slash masterclass. I hope that this has been helpful for you. And one thing that I do is I learn a lot from gardeners in other climates. So if you have anything to add, especially if you are in a climate that's different from mine, I would love for you to put it in the comments so that we could all learn from each other. Thank you so much for watching the Beginner's Garden podcast here. And don't forget, you can always listen on the go by searching the Beginner's Garden podcast on your favorite podcasting app. I'll chat with you next time.